This next tutorial is going to focus on utilizing keyboard input for moving artwork around the stage. So I've started my file and I've created a piece of artwork as a movie clip, has a linkage of player. Now do notice that the artwork is centered, so it's not registered by its left corner. That will just be a little bit easier as we start moving the artwork around the stage. So we're going to have to listen for keyboard input and then update the position of the artwork on stage based on that keyboard input. And through this we will explore a couple strategies of practices that you can use because there are uh, the easiest method is filled with a few uh, difficulties and uh, problems associated with it and we will look at then a better method for capturing keyboard input. So I have my player started. I'm going to save my file. Now to start coding with it, bar player to movie clip and now I can say function setup And so we're going to follow a lot of the same methods that we follow each time. So I create my player. I'm going to put the player in about the middle of the stage. So I'll say the player's x is 275, player's y is equal to 200. I could do stage to stage width divided by 2, but this is just a little bit faster to type. Since this is just a demonstration piece or proof of concept, I would expect in your projects that you use more discretion with it. So I can save, run my project, and we'll see that there is absolutely nothing on screen. Because what I still need to do is I need to, at the very end, call my function, my setup function. And now I'll see there's player, and it's waiting for keyboard input. Now, capturing keyboard input requires you to listen for when a key has been pressed, and then you have to listen for when a key has been released. And when that occurs, it sends out a message. It says, hey, guess what? This key was pressed, and we can identify what key, and we can also identify which key on the keyboard is released when that event happens. So these are events that we can listen for. So I can say stage dot add event listener. Now the disadvantage here is it's not going to be giving me the information that I need for code completion unless I have that import statement or that event already registered. So in lieu of finishing adding this, I could start typing in that function so I get better completion. And this is going to be, this is my key down function. And it's a keyboard event. So if you notice, I just typed KYB and then E, and then it works out to give me what I need. And then I can complete that. And now I'm going to have much better code completion. And we'll have a function key up. So now I have my key down and my key up function as part of this. So now when I tell the stage to add and event listener it can now auto complete with what I need so I'm going to have a key down and then I'll have a key up and that will be easy enough to just put in through copy paste so key down key up now, if we want to prove this is working, I could certainly put in a trace statement and say, hey, trace what's going on. But what this doesn't do is this doesn't actually give me, you know, I, I need to be able to identify what I have pressed. And that is identified by my key code. 
Now, to gain access to the key code, we can trace that out. And I'll say trace e dot code. And we'll notice it's now uh, hinting for us, and it will also give us a further import statement, which, um, or it should have, but it didn't. But that is one we will need. So now this is going to give me my key code. So if I run this and press a key on the keyboard, it's giving me a number. Those numbers are associated with keys. The ones I'm most concerned about right now are the arrow keys because those are commonly used for moving artwork around on screen. So I have my left arrow, which is a key code of 37, my up arrow, key code of 38, right arrow of key code 39, down arrow of 40, 37, 38, 39, and 40. So knowing that, I can listen or respond to those key codes. So this is also something that's really nice about it is if I ever forget those numbers, I just trace out the key code for what I'm looking for here, which is quite nice. And those numbers will magically appear. So I'm just going to comment that in case I want it later, if I want to find the key code for space or something like that. So this is really going to be a series of if statements that I can track. So I could say if e.keycode is equal to 37, that would mean I press the left key. Now, this type of cycling through these key codes, there is a different way of doing a conditional statement like this that you can use in programming called a switch statement, which does make slightly more human readable code, I think. And we may take a look at that, otherwise we'll just continue with this approach. So if the key code is 37, and I can put a comment in to remind myself, left, like this. And what I can say is player.x minus equals 5. So knowing that, I can save this, I can run it. If I press the up arrow, nothing, down arrow, nothing, right, left arrow, we can see that it starts moving. If I press the key, you'll watch and hold the key, you'll see it move once, pause, and then start moving faster. And it doesn't move with a very fluid amount, but at least it is moving. So we've now demonstrated this can work. And the challenge that we're running into here is the movement is related to the key repeat rate. Because the keyboard is firing off this message based on how fast the key repeat rate is set on the keyboard. So if we set the key repeat rate in our system preferences to be really slow, it's going to crawl unless I just keep bashing the key on my keyboard, which isn't a very desirable way to work. You can work that way, but it's not great. So there is a better way. And this will require us to introduce a little different approach to things and some additional programming constructs to make sense out of things. What is going to happen now is we're going to just get the player moving left first. And once we do that, then we can expand this into all the other directions. So I'm going to introduce something called a Boolean. A Boolean is a programming variable that has one of two possible values, true or false. So I'm going to say var left, and it's a Boolean. Now, that Boolean, we will start it out with a value of left is not equal to true. So it's false. So left is now equal to false. Then what I want to have happen is I want when I, and we'll reuse this line later, so I'm not going to delete it yet. I'll just comment it out. When I press the key, I want left to be equal to true. And when I let go of the key, it's 
going to be the same kind of code here. So if the key code of the key I let go of is 37, then we want left to become false, meaning I'm no longer holding the left key down. So when I press the key, left is true. When I let go of the key, left becomes false. At this point, we now need to introduce a loop into the mix. The loop is going to be function loop tied to the enter frame, same as we've done before. We need to add a listener. We've now added the listener for loop. Loop is going to run, and it says if left. So if left is true, is if we just say something in our conditional, we're asking if that's true. If we wanted to say if left is equal to false, we could use our shortcut version of exclamation mark, which means not. It's a negation. But we say if left, then at this point, this is where I'm now going to use my player line. So what will happen is loop will run. If left is true, it starts moving the player. But now instead of updating based on the key repeat rate, it's now updating based on the frame rate. So it can now update 24 times per second. So it's going to be substantially better. So now when I press the key, nothing happens. I, it appears as I, I try to get this to move and nothing's happening, what's occurring is I committed the cardinal sin of copy paste and I changed one part and forgot to change the other part. So I need to also have a key down and a key up. So both key down and key up, which meant key up, the second key up was registering, so left stayed false, therefore it wouldn't move. So now if I press the key, let go, press, let go. And we can see that it's moving much better than it was moving when I was tied to the key repeat rate. So now what's really left is to add in the remaining directions of left, right, up, or down. Now typically you pair left and right together because they mutually cancel each other and you pair up and down together. So I wouldn't use for if statements in my loop, but then I would use something along the lines of else player dot x plus equals five. So, oh, and it should be else if right. So we have if left, it moves, else if, and then sometimes it's easy to, easier to separate it out. So we have left and right, they're mutually canceling each other. Now, the same way that I have a left, I'm going to need a right, uh, up, and a down. Left, right, up, down. Now up, left, and right. Now under the key codes, we can just do these as four ifs, copy, paste, paste, 37, 39 is right, and then up, down and 38 and 40. Now at this point I am going to 
trust in the miracle of copy paste and cross my fingers I get it correct this time now I just need to change my trues to false so now I have all my keyboard events up down left right we have left and right And now I can change this to up and down. Change my X to a Y and X to a Y. So theoretically, if all goes well, I should be able to up, down, forward, back. So now you can see, and if I hold down two keys, I will move in approximately a 45 degree line and you could work on restricting that if you're so inclined but in most projects that's not going to be too troubling you may decide that you do want your object to face where it's going it's normal when you are building artwork in um, in flash I was hitting the, the wrong key. That from a rotational standpoint, you always point things to the right. So this is kind of a top-down person. So I'm viewing it like an old-school gauntlet-style game where you're looking top-down. Not 3D, but just straight down. So with this, you always point your artwork to the right. That would be zero. So looking at the stage, so your artwork should always point in this direction that is zero and then flash we can see what happens when we start rotating so we'll work on rotating our way around the circle choosing kind of four points but then when we press a key it rotates our character so it's moving in that direction that will be slightly awkward when we move to work on moving in the if you're holding down two keys, but we can make it work as part of it. So we can put the rotation here, or we can code it in under the values here. So when I press a key, that does cause the rotation. So I can say player.rotation equals, and now I'm going to start out when I uh, rotation is measured in degrees so when I press left I want to be 180 degrees from where I was facing and now I'm going to add these lines into the rest of them now we don't need to necessarily and we could have put this under a loop if we wanted or we can just put it here so oh wait left I yeah, left is 180. When I press right, I'm at my original rotation. And then we can go 90 and 270. We can rotate. Oh, the 90 and 270 need to be flipped a little bit. So when I press up, that's 270. And when I press down, that's 90. It starts to give us so really my rotational arrow should be opposite of that so the rotation is moving not in a counterclockwise but rotation moves in a clockwise direction so the degree value so we rotate clockwise around with zero starting here pointing to the right.